pro-independence forces have lost their majority in parliament. This after a Spanish judge ruling, but also due to their disagreements on how to react to it. Hello, and welcome to Catalan News. The Parliament Speaker, Roger Turrent, is not accepting Carles Puigdemont and other MPs' votes by proxy. And as they reject being substituted, they won't be able to vote from now on. In a moment, we'll go into depth on this crisis, and we'll also go through what's new at the Sitges Film Festival. When the Spanish Supreme Court suspended six prosecuted MPs in July, but let them be replaced, few guessed the pro-independence bloc would take three months to react and that the final outcome would be losing their majority in the chamber. But this is what happened today. The Catalan Parliament Speaker, Roger Turen, knew it would be a tough day when he chaired the chamber bureau at noon. The ruling pro-independence party started the meeting by disagreeing on how to respond to the suspension of MPs ordered by the Spanish Supreme Court. They ended by voting differently and thus breaking their alliance in the chamber for the first time at a crucial moment. Why? The Esquerra party members affected had accepted designating other MPs to temporarily substitute them. But Junts per Catalunya refused to do the same. They wanted Carles Puigdemont and their three jailed representatives to keep on voting by proxy. Turren, a member of Esquerra and threatened with legal action, would not accept this, and so Junts per Catalunya's proposal was rejected. All eyes immediately turned to the government. Is the Esquerra Junts per Catalunya coalition executive in danger? Is the country heading for a fresh election? The cabinet spokeswoman said no before the session started. Si avui s'acaba donant posicions diferents, que no sé si serà el cas uh, dels grups parlamentaris, això no té per què afectar l'acció de govern. Yeah, what was in danger was the pro-independence majority in parliament. In a joint letter, Puigdemont and the three Junts per Catalunya suspended and jailed MPs said they assumed their votes won't be counted from now on. Without these four votes, it means the groups in favour of a Catalan state lose their absolute majority in the chamber, even though in the election they won 70 seats between them, two more than the majority threshold of 68. And the result became obvious today, in the voting on the motions to conclude the general policy debate. Symbolic votes condemning the King of Spain were rejected by the chamber. But the most serious consequences are yet to come. The support of all the pro-independence groups together will now no longer be enough to pass the 2019 budget. The general policy debate prompted a quick reaction to the crisis by the two ruling parties involved and by the opposition in the chamber. Les dificultats per tirar endavant aquest ple, més enllà de l'autocrítica que els representants públics ens hem de fer, no ens han de fer oblidar que hi ha repressió i l'ingerència d'un jutge, del senyor Llanera. Tenim l'obligació de protegir la democràcia trobant solucions amb rigor i honestedat, que protegeixin les majories i l'efectivitat de les votacions i alhora els drets polítics dels nostres companys i diputats empresonats a l'exili. Assumen su derrota i empiecen a gestionar-la. Ustedes no han sabido llegar al fin del camino Unidos, dejen ya de mentir, dejen de provocar de vergüenza. Porque se han parado trampas entre ustedes y nos volían a engañar a todos. Pero yo creo que eso, a partir de hoy, ya no cola, presidente. Diputados y diputadas de Junts per Catalunya, me em refereixo muy directamente a todos vosotros. Rectifiqueu. Ens demanava que si no hi estàvem units no ens en sortiríem. Nosaltres li diem que si no posen aquest govern a treballar pel seu poble, el seu poble no se'n sortirà. Lleialtat i convivència, dos aspectes fonamentals i dos aspectes que no es poden acomplir sota la presidència del president Torra. Meanwhile, in Brussels, the Catalan Digital Policy Minister denounced the EU's silence towards Spain's alleged digital repression. Jordi Puigneró made an official complaint to the European Ombudsman. The reason? The European Commission ignored the Catalan government's calls to investigate the Spanish authorities' decision to shut down hundreds of websites and apps in the run-up to last October's referendum. What we want to do with the actions that we're going to do 
doncs és que la repressió digital no és inadmissible, és inadmissible a Europa en el segle en el segle 21 i per tant aquests fets no es tornin a repetir en un en un país de la de la Unió Europea. Commuters in the Barcelona area had a pretty hard time this morning during rush hour. The Catalan capital faced an absolute downpour at around 9 a.m. with up to some 50 millimeters in half an hour. Metro services were disrupted as well as some bus routes and the road rings surrounding the city suffered cuts due to floodings. Firefighters were called more than 100 times in two hours, but the worst might be yet to come as rain is expected to intensify tonight. The series The Walking Dead has come to Catalonia. At least, so has one of its directors and producers, and minds behind the special effects, Greg Nicotero. Nicotero walked the red carpet at the Sitges Film Festival today and delivered good news for the zombie show fans. The Walking Dead should be running for years to come. What's more, he elaborated on the goals for the series' newly premiered season. Our goal is really to kind of start shifting the show back into, uh, into those, those shows that you that were emotional, that were heartfelt, uh, and were thrilling. So far, this film festival has delivered a star-studded weekend. Nicolas Cage accepted the Grand Honorary Award, and in doing so, thanked the festival and the audience, both for the award and for their enthusiasm. But what you're doing here is so important, because you're encouraging, with your enthusiasm, with your appreciation, young filmmakers and young actors to follow their dreams, and to go ahead and be abstract and be surrealists. And that fosters creative thinking and stimulates new talent. So thank you for that. Cage also explained that horror has a different set of physics, a dream logic, which allows for surrealism. The actor most recently starred in Mandy, a genre-vending gore thriller shown at the event. It's crazy. Also on the screen was the controversial new feature lane by Danish filmmaker Lars von Trier, the house that Jack built, a look inside the day and the mind of a serial killer. Polemic due to its scenes of explicit violence, it was however well received at Sidges. There are four more days to go for the film fest, which has already seen names like Tilda Swinton, Ron Perlman and Pam Greer, and to welcome many more including Peter Weir and Katharina Kubrick, daughter of the renowned filmmaker. This is the 50th anniversary of one of Kubrick's masterpieces, 2001 Space Odyssey, which will be shown for the ending of the festival. Still, when it comes to horror, tomorrow the first terror theme park in Southern Europe will open its gates. Called Horrorland, it's housed in an old power plant in Serx, near the Pyrenees, and its success is guaranteed. Some 22,000 tickets have been sold, with few left. Visitors coming from all around Europe in the coming weeks will be joined by some 30 international media outlets. The result? A full house for most of the accommodations in the area, something uncommon for this season. And today we put an end to our show with footage of something different. A music festival for children in San Cugat, north of the capital. Several well-known Catalan artists performed at the Petits Camaleons Festival, translated as Small Chameleons in English, in an event catered for the concertgoers of the future and also of the present. <laughs>